Setting up a GUI app in C++ is quite some work. So today I show how fast setting up a GUI app can be. Let's do the setup and later I explain the technical details and what you need to know why does it work like that. This is a freshly installed Linux, so I only need to run a few commands until I get my first GUI app up and running. Let's do it and later I will explain what they are doing. So first we go to the console and we install Docker. I use snap for that, so I use sudo snap install docker and it can be that you have already installed it like I have here um, because it's part of my, my distribution here. Um, docker is the basis for this and next we need to clone a repository which I have already prepared. So this is the repository which we need to clone, it's in my github and it's a dockerized version of the I am GUI and I go here, I get the link for the SSH clone and I do git clone, post the link here in, let's do this docker GUI folder and we clone the repository and then we switch to the repository. Inside of this docker GUI, we see that we have a docker file and we also have some docker compose stuff. So let's use docker compose to actually build the docker container. So we use here sudo docker compose to build the content that is in this um, docker compose and in the docker file. And this will set up the container and depending on your internet connection and whether you have installed the container already, it might take a while to download the stuff to build the docker file, right? And the docker image out of that uh, particular file. But here you see, because I have already cached everything, it's uh, working quite nicely and quite fast. The next command that I need to do is I need to um, set up my build directory. So um, because I'm running here inside of this, I'm running Mison. And uh, Mison, um, like any build system, requires setting up a build directory first. But we don't do it using only Mison. We do it already through the Docker container. And this is basically we run a console command and here we set up a build directory inside build here. And um, here we use the Docker container which we have just created. And you see here it is already downloading some dependencies to glfw and catch2 which we later need to run the whatever we want to run. The build directory has now been created and as a next step we need to um, to compile the app. So let's use that. Uh, let's go here inside our formally created build directory and use again docker compose to um, build whatever is inside here. And here we um, compile the app also depending on your machine and so it can take a while um, and also yeah, depending uh, on the calculation power that you have um, it might take a while. Now it has finished compiling and after compiling the last thing that we need to do is to run the application and we use this again docker compose for that but this time we use a different image and we run the application and here it is currently it's empty so let's add some content. I have added now a few files here inside this project uh, that I have from another project already um, and these represent Tetris and now I again build the application using the docker container and after building the application we should be able to have a GUI app which in this case is running Tetris. So here it's already linking so we just need to run it and here we go we have Tetris and we can play Tetris. Perfect. Now let's look at how this is working internally. You might already know docker and Docker it, uh, is a service where you basically can encapsulate everything that you need to run a specific kind of application. Um, so you basically run inside Docker something like a lightweight operating system and you can install their stuff and you can basically create an environment that exactly fits your application. And what we are doing here inside the Docker file is that we specify how this environment will look like. So we say, for instance, that we want to run an Ubuntu 22.04 and using that we want to install everything after that. And here we already have the dependencies that we later need 
to actually access everything and to build our application. So for instance, we have GLFW3 and GLFW3 dev environment. These include all the necessary libraries which we will need to get our GUI application up and running. But because it's already specified here, we don't need to install it on our local system because the Docker container has it. Uh, same goes for some Xorg stuff. This is your window manager or also some XPK common development environment. Also, because I'm using Meson as a build system and Clang as a compiler and Git as a version control system, I also install these. And then as a last step, I get uh, the content of uh, dear I am GUI from the GitHub of Ocarnut and also of I am plot because I'm also using this a lot to uh, draft plots and I am plot is also very good for that. And I clone here a specific version because I know that these specific versions here, they always work with the versions that I install here for the Ubuntu. So whoever checks this out, it will always run. And this is also a big benefit of Docker. It's exactly specified how it looks like. Now, the next thing that we need to have a look at is the Docker Compose. So a Docker file itself is just creating an image and Docker Compose is basically telling how this image shall be used. And we do have two different services running inside that image or off that image. And one of them is to compile the code and the other one is to run the code. And here's a difference. So to compile the code, we only need to create our working directory, which we called code here. And we mount that working directory inside our Docker container. And we use the latest image that we have available from from the Docker file. And this is then used to compile the code. And using that one, we can then pass any command that we want. And actually, we can set up the build directory. This is what I did. And we can set up um, the code. And we see this also here um, that I use here docker compose run console. And this run console is exactly that service here. It's just accessing the console a service here and it's then running the command ninja minus c build here which is compiling the application using the docker file and this console service the second service that we're setting up here is the gui service this has a little bit more detail um, because for the gui we need to connect the internals of the docker container to the operating system that i'm running here in order to actually display something and this is done by using the environment variable of the display. And here I'm just passing um, as a display, what is my current display? So I'm basically saying, use my display of the operating system to output your stuff. And then I also need to mount the volumes of the X server, which is this X11 of the Unix. And I also um, need to mount here some additional stuff for X server, depending on which operating Linux you're running. This is also the reason why this won't work on Windows, by the way. So it's Linux only. Then the next thing is that I also need to mount my working directory uh, or set my working directory, which I have already mounted. And I need to set the network mode to host, um, which is basically enabling that I can pass through the display to actually see my GUI application on, um, yeah, on my operating system outside of my container. So the application is running inside the container, but the display and the output is routed through to the host system. Yeah, that's basically about this Docker Compose file. And now let's have a look at um, the Meson file behind it. So this is the build system which I'm using, Meson, and here, um, what I'm doing is I'm just including the correct directories, which I already have cloned. So for instance, from this IM GUI, which I internally cloned, you might remember from the Docker file, here I cloned IM GUI and IM plot. So I'm reusing here IM GUI and IM plot as include directories so I can access them in my code. I use the GLFW li library as a dependency because I need to link against that. And I'm also having here as a testing framework catch included because I really like testing my code and catch is a really good choice if you want to have a lightweight testing framework. And then I just add the application files like you would do in any build system, for instance, the main, 
um, some implementation details of uh, GLFW and OpenGL3 because these are the renderers that I use in the backend and also some IAM plot stuff. Um, I have just included it here. I have not used it, um, but included it here in case you will need it. And then later I just create the executable using the include directories and the dependencies of that. And this is then also later the name that I can use to build my application. Okay, so last thing that I want to have a look at is then the code. You can find the code inside the source directory. So usually there's some main inside. I have replaced here the main with different main, but this one looks super similar. Um, but the important one is here this app base module and probably also the sample module. So the app base module, this is um, what I provide here in this, um, in this GitHub repository. It's basically a simple class which you can use to create your application. So here inside is an app base class which is handling all of this window stuff for you, which is creating your main loop, which is um, basically doing everything that you don't want to do yourself. And here, the only things that you then need to in, uh, implement are stuff like startup or like the update function. And this is later what is, for instance, implemented here in the app.hpp. This is deriving from the app itself, from the app base. And here we can implement now startup functions, we can implement update functions, or also implement what for instance happens on mouse button callbacks, cursor position callbacks, or key callbacks. And especially these functions here I have now implemented as an example in this Tetris app. And here this is really just implementing here the startup, the update function, um, using for instance also the handler for some of the cursor positions or mouse button clicks and so on or even the key callbacks to move the pieces around. Um, so this is basically a good example of how you can use it later on to implement your code. So you can find the links to all of these repositories in the description and this uh, has also a nice uh, nice readme inside for the dockerized dear guy, uh, I am GUI. Let me know what you think of it and also let me know how to make it uh, even better. If you have some suggestions, if you have some uh, propositions that I want to uh, have included and so on. Or if you just want to use it for a cool project, you can also share your project, what you are doing with it. Um, and I think it's a super easy way to get started into GUI programming and really helping you to um, set yourself up fast. You have some getting started here inside. You have all the commands which I used here uh, and showed you here today um, how you can use them. And um, if you want to uh, uh, contribute, you can also create pull requests or uh, offer issues or whatever, or just shoot me an email and I try to see what I can do. So that's all that I have for you today. Um, I hope that you will use it and find it useful to set up your own GUI applications. Um, maybe you should comment below if you have something cool created and share a link to your GitHub. Or if you want to keep watching, I think this video might have exactly what you're looking for. And until then, as always, enjoy coding.